So hello everybody. Um, thank you for joining. My name is Kush Tekriwal. Um, and today for the reading group session, um, I read the paper titled Rand Augment, um, Practical Automated Data Augmentation with Reduced Search Space. Um, so I hope this is useful for some of you um, moving forward in your data science careers. Um, so firstly, just about data augmentation. Um, I hope a lot of you are already familiar with this concept, but essentially uh, data augmentation is used um, to artificially expand the size, oftentimes artificially expand the size of the training set uh, by creating uh, like modified versions of images in the data set. So it's very often used in computer vision applications. Um, and the reason for this is because um, there's been a track record that data augmentation can significantly improve uh, the generalization of deep learning models. So it's uh, so if you take an example of ImageNet, um, we saw that using data augmentation was really able to uh, push the performance um, of classification on this on this task. Uh, so it's um, so essentially uh, just as a gist or a summary, um, essentially it's used uh, to create modified versions of the training set. Um, to increase the size of the training set, and it's useful because it improves the performance of these models. Um, so this paper, Rand Augment, was released in November of 2019. Um, so at the time of writing this paper, um, the current state of the art for data augmentation is a technique called automated augmentation. Um, so automated augmentation um, uses reinforcement learning um, to find augmentation policies by uh, training um, small models on small data sets. So they have like a proxy task on which they do reinforcement learning on and they find what the optimal policies are. Um, so there are around 30 plus different parameters that are involved, um, which they tune by using reinforcement learning. And then by tuning on this small proxy task, they then transfer those policies to the larger models. Um, so this was the state of the art. Um, it's called automated augmentation and it was producing state of the art results for classification. I'll share the results um, in some time. But, but there is a big assumption, right, that is being made is that um, using this proxy task to do the learning, whereas you think <coughs> proxy task provides a predictive indication of that larger task. Um, so that's a big assumption. And um, essentially, RAND Augment um, really challenges this main underlying assumption and really um, disproves that this assumption is correct. Um, so the reason for this is because when we're, when we're learning our parameters on that small proxy task, we're not taking into account um, such as the model size or the data set size, which can have a significant impact on choosing the parameters. So the main contribution, the first main contribution from this grand augment paper was to prove that the strength of the augmentation depends strongly on the model size. And then um, later on, we'll see that it's also strongly, depends strongly on the data set size. Um, so when I say strength of augmentation, um, I mean, so whenever we apply um, an augmentation technique, um, we always have to specify a distortion magnitude or how much we want to do the augmentation by. Um, so that number, that integer number or real value number depends strongly on the model size. So if we see this graph on the left, um, where we're observing three different lines. Um, so each line corresponds to a different network size. Um, so the blue line is the smallest network, the purple line is the mid size, and then the red, the red line is the largest network size. Um, and then the square boxes are the optimal distortion magnitudes for that particular network size. Um, so we see from that left plot that larger networks require a larger optimum um, distortion magnitude. Um, so we can't simply, uh, we have to take into account the network size when we are tuning for these parameters. Um, and then similarly, this, this point is uh, reiterated in this plot on the right, 
where it's uh, pretty straightforward. So we just have widening parameter, which is a notion of network size on the x-axis, and then the optimal distortion magnitude, and we see that it's monotonically increasing. Um, so larger networks require larger distortion magnitudes or larger strengths of augmentation. Um, so this was again rep replicated for training set size or data set size. Um, so again, we have three lines on this plot on the left. So the blue is the smallest data set size, the purple is the medium data set size, and then the red is the largest. Um, and then again, the, the square boxes are the optimal distortion magnitudes. Um, so again, we see that the larger data set sizes re require larger distortion magnitudes. And again, that's reiterated on the graph on the right. Um, whereas we see that with larger training set sizes, we require a larger distortion magnitude. Um, so this really disproves that assumption that we can't choose our policies by using that smaller proxy task. Um, and essentially, we are actually arriving at a suboptimal policy by using that automated augmentation technique. And rather, we could come up with a better augmentation strategy if we were to train or choose our hyperparameters directly on the target task. Um, and the way that the RAND augment does this is that it reduces the search space to only two parameters. Um, so previously, the automated augmentation had around 38 parameters, um, and the RAND augment has um, reduced that search space to only two. So now we can directly train or directly search for these parameters directly on the target task. So we don't have to use and we, um, we don't have to deal with those assumptions. Um, so, the, so the next question is how do we reduce the search space? Um, so instead of doing reinforcement learning, um, now it's becoming very, very simple. So now we just have, I'll share the code in a little bit. It's only a few lines of code, but essentially if we have like an, um, a set of transformations, we just choose a transformation with uniform probability. So if we have k transformations, then we choose a transformation with one over k probability. Um, so say we have three transformations, one scale, one's rotate, and then one's blur. So k is equal to three. And then for each training image, we want to do two transformations. So at the first transformation, we have three choices. And then the second transformation, we have three choices again. So this means that we have uh, three to the power two. So we have nine potential policies for this training image. Um, so as I mentioned before, there are two parameters. So n, or the number of transformations, is one of the parameters. Um, and then the second parameter is the distortion magnitude, which we were discussing before. And we would refer to that as m. Um, so so there was also another finding that we can just use a single global distortion for all the transformations um, rather than having a, a distortion magnitude for each transformation. And the evidence for this was that they, they, they saw evidence that the learning magnitude um, for each transformation follows a similar training schedule. Um, so essentially now we have arrived with only two parameters, the number of transformations and then the global distortion m. Um, so the paper suggests that we can just do naive grid search, um, which, which, is, which works very well actually to find these two parameters N and M. Um, so this is actually the code to implement RAND augment. Um, so um, as I mentioned before, say we have all of our different transformations in a list. Um, so in this case, we have um, say 14 different transformations. Um, and then we have this function rand augment, and it takes in those two parameters, n and m. And we're assuming that we've already done grid search and found those, what those optimal values are. Um, so now we, again, as I mentioned before, we just simply do a uniform sampling. Um, we just sample with the uniform probability from that transform list um, n number of times. And then we apply that transformation with that m magnitude for each of those samples. So it's very straightforward, it's very simple. There's no reinforcement learning involved. It just, uh, it's just, it's very straightforward essentially. Um, so there's the question is, is this really effective? And 
I think we would all want to see what the results were. Um, so this is for the first task, uh, which was image classification on the CIFAR data sets. Um, so the PBA, fast AA, and AA are all different variants of automated augmentation. So they all three um, leverage reinforcement learning in some way. Um, and then um, RA is RAND augment. Um, so we are able to see that um, even if RAND augment is not always giving us the best results, it's giving competitive enough results that we remove all the complexity with reinforcement learning with those 38 different parameters to only two parameters. Um, and it works really, really well. And a lot of tasks it actually outperforms. And even when it does, it, it's very competitive. Um, this is for um, this is for another task. Um, I believe um, I'm slipping the the task uh, what the task was for this uh, table of performances. Um, but again, we see that random augment um, outperforms. This is top one and top three accuracies, I believe. Um, and again, we see that it outperforms automated augmentation. Um, and then this is for object detection. Um, so in the COCO data set, um, we do see that auto augment um, does slightly outperform random augment. But again, as I mentioned before, the complexity in the search space is vastly reduced with random augment. Um, so some folks would even uh, prefer random augment, even though we're uh, trading off a little bit in performance. Um, so thank you. I know it was a slightly short presentation, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions.